Good afternoon. I'm Tim Carter, and this is uh, Ask the Builder. Um, <laughs> I was just a moment ago. I was I was typing a chat response to Lorene, and I I thought, wait a minute. I think I'm supposed to be live right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. How are you today? I uh, I'm pretty good. I have I've had a pretty busy day so far. Um, I um I would say it's a, I call these days a salmon day. It it feels like I've been working all day, but I just don't feel like I got that far. And uh, that that's how those salmon fish must feel when they're they're swimming upstream and trying to jump up those waterfalls. I mean, isn't that amazing when you see videos of what those fish can do? I, it's, I mean, when I when you see stuff like that. You know, how, how, I, I don't. How, how can you? How can you think there's not a God? I mean, how how, how amazing is Mother Nature? I, I mean, seriously, like fish that can jump up waterfalls. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> anyway, crutch forward. Let me get something to drink. I I um, it's going to be a really fun live stream today because. We're going to go, who knows where we're going to go. Uh, I always pretty much leave that up to you. I'm going to talk a little bit in just a moment uh, about some ceramic tile, but I have some really interesting, and, and what, and I'm going to share a story of what precipitated this ceramic tile topic. Stand by. Just so you know, I'm not a doctor and I've never played one on TV, but the top um, urologist in Los Angeles took a kidney stone out of me. And here's what he told me. If you never want to have another kidney stone, all you have to do is just drink one extra liter of water a day. <laughs> There's nothing hard about that. I told that to a really, really good friend of mine today that I say that <laughs> lately. I've been saying that on the live stream a lot. There's nothing hard about this. There's nothing hard about it. <laughs> uh, I'm in a pretty good mood today, in case you haven't noticed. Josh, howdy. Marlon, glad to see you're here. Um, I, I, I want to share this really quickly. But first, I got to go find the video. Um, hold on a second. Uh, it only take me a second. I really got upset yesterday. Um, and I don't know if... Uh, uh, um, just a second. Um, here we go. I'm going to share a video with you. And I had to send this video yesterday. Um, I had to send this video. Um, and I, I don't know if he's going to get it or not to the president and CEO of L.L. Uh, Bean. And it's a really fantastic video. It's only uh, 60 seconds long. And um, ho hold on. See, if this is why we need a woman doing all this, because women can multitask. Men can't. <clears throat> ah, there's Will. Hello, Will. All right, I'm going to share this video with you. And, and we do not have to discuss this. But I, I got here. Let me share this video with you. So this is a video of Morgan Freeman, the, the actor, probably from 20 years ago, maybe longer because it's not HD and he was on 60 Minutes. It's only, a, it's less than a minute long. And I, 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 um, I signed up, I, I, I love L.L. Bean stuff. This is an L.L. Bean flannel shirt. Um, Will, Will loves L.L. Bean. Will, Will lives pretty close. He probably can drive to L.L. Bean, gosh, uh, got to be less than an hour to from his house to Freeport. I've only been to their stores one time. Actually, twice I've been there. It, they're amazing. <laughs> I think they're open 24 hours a day. I get an email from L.L. Bean. I, you know, I get their marketing emails. Probably I get one. They're pros at it. They are so, if you, if you want to learn how to sell products, 
and you want to learn how to sell to a list, I'm telling you right now, even if you don't like L.L. Bean stuff, go subscribe to their, their little announcements, their little newsletter. And every three days, you're going to get an email. And they're, they're on topic. They're not long. They always feature a product. Well, yesterday, they sent me one that really, really pissed me off. And um, it was about Black History Month. And um, you need to watch that video. You need to watch this video right now and let Morgan Freeman tell you how to stop racism in America. I'm trying to copy it again. All right. And then that's all I'm going to say about it. But we have people who they they love that page out of Caesar's playbook, Julius Caesar's pay, playbook, right? Divide and conquer. You want to conquer people? Divide them up. All right, that's enough. Uh, is after midnight? Not yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> I would never be able to stay up that late. <laughs> uh, well, but go watch that video and start practicing that. Start practicing what Morgan Freeman has to say. Not only is he a good actor, I mean, he's a great actor, actually. He's a really smart man. He understands it. He, he knows what's going on. He's a smart guy, man. I mean, he pins Mike Wallace to the flipping mat. He had Mike Wallace squirming. I actually think it's amazing that 60 Minutes actually aired that segment or that part of the segment. I would have thought that Mike Wallace would have said, no way, man, we are not showing that. Yeah, well, Morgan Freeman, he hit it out of the flipping ballpark. Walk off, home run. All right. If you uh, have any questions about anything about, I don't care what it is. I don't care if you want to know how much snow we've got and the big monster, the big monster storm. <laughs> you know, um, you know, that's just crushing everybody, supposedly. Go ahead and ask me. If you um, if you have a question about your roof, about your plumbing, um, whatever, ask me. Just put it in the chat. Right now that we're going to talk really quickly, though, about uh, the ceramic tile, the main topic of the live stream. Here, I have to read to you. I have to read. This is a really great teaching moment. Really, really great. I got this comment from Lynn. I'm not going to tell you what her last name is. She came to the website just a, just a little over two hours ago. And as soon as I saw this comment, I thought, this would be great for the live stream. This would be great. Now, listen, now pay attention when I read this. Really, pay attention. Listen to this. Here's what she said. We requested bullnose corners. They look to be metal and are nice and smoothly edged to the drywall, but the metal itself is still exposed. My drywall guy said they do not need to plaster or texture them. Is that right? How will the paint adhere to the metal over time? All right, so what this probably is, all right, this is not to be confused with bullnose ceramic tile. But once I saw the bullnose, I thought, you know what? I do want to talk about ceramic tile too. If you, it's really interesting to go to travel around the United States and to see how, and, and, and I would love to travel the world to see how they do things. I'd love, oh, if I wish that they had those, I wish we had those transporter technology that was in Star Trek 60 years ago. You know, I could just step on a little circle on the floor and, you know, dock or whatever, or, you know, the, uh, what was the Scotty? Scotty could push the buttons and I'd vaporize and then I'd end up somewhere else. I would love to go to England and, and I would love, love, love to go around London for a day or wherever that guy is, that young plumber that Steve introduced to us. 
Uh, I would love to see see some of the uh, carpentry work out in the countryside that some of the master carpenters do in, in the UK. But here in America, if you here's what's really, really interesting. If you come to New England or the Midwest and you look at how the drywall finishers finish drywall, they use a corner bead that's a hard 90 degree angle. And uh, it is, um, it, it's, it's, it's called corner bead because it has a very slightly rounded corner at the outside of radius. And that radius is there on purpose so that the drywall guy can hide the, the so that he can glide his taping knife and his finishing knife over the outside of that corner and put a thin coating of mud over the, the metal. And, and what this is for, it's a metal protector. Th this is not new technology. These metal beads were used 100 years ago by plasters, but they were much heavier. They were, they were thicker, and they, they had uh, expanded wire lath, um, metal lath that, that were part of them, and they covered them with plaster, and, and they protected a corner so that if you... Because some people did not want to have a wood-framed corner. There's two... Like, if you have an opening like an archway between a room, you, you, you have two ways to finish it. You could have this, like a, if you're like my daughter, so my daughter, my oldest daughter, she's all about smooth, no woodwork, no nothing. And there's not a piece of woodwork in her home, in her new home. I know that sounds crazy. Not even baseboard. No woodwork around the windows, nothing. Everything is just smooth drywall. You may be like my daughter. Or you may be like me, and I hate that look. I hate everything about it. It looks way too modern. And I prefer to have a wood casing. In other words, I prefer to, to put a jam, a metal, you know, woodwork there, and a woodwork. And so, so basically, it look, an, an opening, an archway, looks like a trimmed out door. The whole purpose of the bead is to protect the corner so that if you, if you didn't have it there and you were bringing boxes in or you're dragging something around the house, you would tear up the corner. So it's, it's, it's like the bumper of your car. I mean, that's, that's what it's supposed to do. This woman, here, here's the teaching moment of her email. Is that, let's go back and look at it again, because it's really important the way that her first, um, her first two sentences, she goes, we requested bullnose corners. Okay, good for you. You did the right thing. You requested them. And then she goes, they look to be metal and are nice and smoothly edged the drywall, but the metal itself is still exposed. All right, so what mistake did she make? What mistake did Lynn make? She, in the contract or in the specification for the job, she maybe didn't specify, she didn't put a photograph in. That's the best way to say it. She could have taken a photograph of, of what she liked, of what she wanted it to look like, and put that in and said, this is how I want all of the corners of my archways to look. Case settled. And But she did not do that. So now she's in, now, now she doesn't know, will the paint stick to it or not? And what you need to understand is these rounded bull noses, if, if Alex was here, um, Alex is not, I don't think here, or if he is, he's lurking. Alex is a contractor in Los Angeles who sometimes is here on the live stream. And Alex would tell you that, you know, these bull, these rounded bullnose corners are very popular out, out, in the, out in the Southwest. I mean, they're very popular in Phoenix, uh, LA, uh, Tucson, uh, Las Vegas. Uh, it's, it's, it's the standard. It's what they use. I mean, if, if they saw our hard 90s, the people would probably go, are you guys nuts? I mean, what happens when a kid hits their head against that? <laughs> the point is, you it, it really helps to travel to see how things are done differently. And all that I want to say about this woman is that she, 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 if she made, the only little mistake she made is in the contract, she should have had better specifications and she should have put in her specifications color photographs. Think how easy that is to do. I mean, it used to be really hard to do this. And she could have taken all these photographs. She could have gotten them off Pinterest, stolen them. It doesn't matter. Instagram. 
the Google images, it doesn't matter. She could have then dropped them into a PDF file that she just shared with her contractor. She's not making money off of them. She's not really hurting anybody's copyright, even if she took my photos. And then with those photos, those photos become part of the contract. And she's basically telling the contractor, this is exactly how I want this to look when you're done. And what's the old saying about pictures, right? They're worth a thousand words. So that's a great teaching moment today. I, I'm so lucky to get all those all the time. Let me get caught up on the comments and then I'll move on. Uh, if uh, yes, all right, um, all right. So here we go. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't seem to be. Uh, I don't see any latency here, Will. Um, it might be at your end. Sean says, um, if she's talking Tao, she's not. She was, I know, well, she, we don't know, but I, I'm convinced after I reread her email that she's talking, uh, and I don't know, she didn't tell me where she lives, but once she, she talked about how, I mean, she said it, and here, there's a clue. I mean, she's not talking Tao. Look, she says, they do, they look to be metal and are nice and smoothly edged to the drywall. So that tells us all exactly what she's talking about. She's talking about the bull nose corner bead. Uh, that they use out West. And uh, anyway, um, but yeah, the tile, I mean, a lot of people don't know about bullnose tile and, and the bullnose tile today for most of the tiles is not like the old bullnose, which had a much bigger radius. And if you go into some of the older homes, you can just see some beautiful, uh, beautiful bullnose and uh, just a beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Silver coin. How you doing? Great that you're here. Great that you're here too, Sean. Let's talk a little bit about ceramic tile just for what it's worth. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that tile, um, first of all, it's primarily clay. And the, the, the composition, the mineral composition of the clay is not always the same. And that's where my geology degree comes in. Actually, clay mineralogy is a is a really big vertical that's part of geology. There are geologists who spend their entire career, all they study is clay mineralogy. It can vary widely because understand that clay, what, what is clay? Clay is just ultra tiny little pieces of rock. It's just very, I mean, like really tiny. And depending on the source of the rock where it's getting eroded and what that chemical composition is, is a function of what the clay mineralogy will be of the clay. You know, it can have a higher feldspar content. It could have a higher quartz content. Uh, you, you know, it, it, it's so complex. You have no idea. I mean, it's harder than Chinese checkers. And, and, and Chinese arithmetic. I'm serious. It's crazy. The point is, if you want hard tile, you want to get, you know, you want to get porcelain. Porcelain tile has, you know, much more silica in it. And it's a much more durable tile. And uh, it's, it's real. It's, it's like so hard that you can't really score it easily and snap it like the softer, uh, typical clay tiles. Like, when we go to cut tile, typically you can score the glaze and you can snap the tile and you can snap off as little as a half inch if you're lucky. Uh, and, and, uh, but, but you cannot do that with porcelain. You have to use a diamond wet saw. A drilling ceramic tile, never use, never, never use a uh, hammer drill. <laughs> Just use a regular spinning drill that's got a nice sharp carbide uh, tip on it. And just as soon as the tip of that bit breaks through the glaze, um, it'll start to drill the hole. And you don't and you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it. Just take your time, moderate pressure, you'll drill the hole through. If you need to make bigger holes, they make diamond hole saws, you know, diamond that'll cut, you know, like a three quarter inch hole, one inch hole, inch and a half hole, even two inch hole, whatever, you know, for like holes around, you know, faucet uh, cartridges, you know, in a shower. Um, if you want to know a little bit about grouting ceramic tile, I've got a, a huge series on the website about how to grout ceramic tile. I urge you watch it. 
If you have questions about Tal, just put them in the chat. Simple as that. I don't know. Am I still freezing up on your screen, Will? You let me know. Although there's nothing I can do about it. If you have a question about anything, I don't care what it is, uh, just put it in the chat. I am happy to help you. More than happy to help you. Um, and I will, will do my best to answer your, your questions. That's 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 why I'm here each day. <laughs> I'm here not to just sit here and blabber. <laughs> I, I My wife tells me I, I do a pretty good job of that. And, <laughs> But I don't necessarily enjoy doing that. I, I can tell you that I've been talking. Will and I have been talking lately. We spent a lot of time today off list talking about golf. And uh, golf. Uh, Will and I are going to golf this spring. And I'm going to drive over to, to Will. And we're going to golf at his amazing golf course. He doesn't own it. He, he happens to work there. And um, we're going to have a heck of a good time. <laughs> I, I am so looking forward to that, to the whole that, you know, where the, the green is, is uh, this big peninsula out into this lake. I, I, um, <laughs> oh, I cannot wait for that hole. I cannot, I, I'm going to really celebrate when I, um, uh, <laughs> I hit it and land on the green. Oh, I shared two videos today with Will. They're both pretty funny. Um, that I, I, I you know, I tape these videos sometimes when I travel and I th put them up and I forget all about them. And I watch this one video where I was golfing out in Los Angeles uh, with my really, really good friend, uh, my best friend, Steve, and his buddy. Uh, he, he used to have a business partner named Dave. And we went to this really funky public golf course. I, I love this course. It's called Shoal Canyon. Look it up. Shoal, S-C-H-O-L-L -L Canyon. You can actually look up the video. Just go to YouTube and type in S-C-H-O-L-L -L Canyon Golf. And then my name, Tim Carter, and you'll watch this video. And Steve or Dave, they're, they're taping this video as we go, these different shots. And uh, I think it was the second hole. I don't know. I don't know which hole it was. It doesn't matter. But uh, surprisingly, I made this like eight or 10 foot putt. <laughs> you know, and I, I mean, it, it was real. I mean, they just showed it. I it's not, and, and I didn't practice. It's not like I putted 10 times before to get the line because I know that any good golfer would go, wait a minute. You you know you 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 knew what to do. I that was a real that was a real par or birdie or whatever it was. I think it was a birdie. Uh, anyway, um, it was fun to watch that video. Uh, and then then I have another one that was maybe done four years ago out in uh, Mesquite, Nevada, uh, at a Coyote I think Coyote Willows or Coyote something golf course. That was that was a hilarious hilarious video. <laughs> a friend of mine uh, mistakenly hit my ball. He thought it was his. And so it, it it made for a good video. If everything goes right, and you know, depending on how it's all working out, I, I hope that Will and I can create this really great video of our golf game. And, and my goal is to um is to uh I, I don't know that Will wants to be in the video, and that's fine if he doesn't want to be. I get that. But but me, what I think would be great would be. Will would, because Will's an expert on this course. He knows this course. He could drive around it blindfolded. So Will knows the course and he's going to describe to me, he's going to say, okay, you know, this, this hole is like this many yards long. Uh, it's a dog leg left. Uh, you can really get into trouble here, blah, blah, blah. So he'll tell that to me. And then I would, then I would go on camera and basically repeat that and just say, okay, here, here. <laughs> Here's what Will told me about this whole uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see what happens. And then the next thing you're going to see is after we're done, then I, I tell you what happened. <laughs> and I I come to find out, and I suspected this all along, that, that Will's a pretty good golfer. He's going to be really modest here. He's not going to say much. <laughs> and and, and I'm, I'm not so good. <laughs> so... Will is Will is going to to beat me every hole. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. We're still going to have a blast. Um, anyway, if you have golf questions, uh, you can ask them here. Uh, I'm going to probably defer to Will. He can answer them because <laughs> he's going to have a much better answer than I do than I'll have. I can tell you that. Um, anyway, uh, I'm interested. I'm interested in all kinds of things. For example, 
uh, I'm actually very interested in you. And I'm interested to know if this week you had a problem uh, at your home or even last week, a recent problem that just kind of came up unexpectedly, or if you have this really nagging problem. I, I mean, just like this, one of these things that you you walk past it every day and and you it just kind of puts you in a bad mood and you keep can, you keep kicking that can down the road. Uh, if you would share this here, that would be great. I would like to, uh, I would like to do that. Play, play, well, play for the ice cream. I already know I'm going to be buying. I'm going to be buying the ice cream. All right, I got it. I got it. That's okay. I'll, I don't mind. I'm going to, I'm going to buy the flipping ice cream. <laughs> I just don't want to bet an ice cream cone each hole. <laughs> That's a lot of ice cream I'd be buying. So, Lorene, I don't know if you saw this at the top. Lorene stopped in right at the beginning. And uh, she is uh, she's out with her husband, whose name is He Who Must Obey. And um, they're running errands. And anyway, she said she'd be here in spirit. And I, you can look at what I wrote up above, if you can still see it in the chat, if it's still visible. <laughs> I thought I would have a little fun with it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Um, so I got the, I just, just before the live stream, just before I went live, I was editing uh, Sunday's newsletter. I've got it all finished. I just, I usually, what I like to do with the newsletter, and I actually do this often with my writing, is I, I like to blurt it out, kind of get it out of my head, and then let it sit for an hour or two or a day. And then I go back and read it. And all of a sudden, all kinds of better ideas come out. And why did I say it that way? I should have said it this way. And so I, I edit it myself. It, it, it would really, you know, there's not a doubt in my mind. Um, it would help if, if I had a true editor who could look at it with, you know, through a different lens. Uh, I don't have that. Uh, it, it's a little problematic to do it that way basically for me, because it forces me to do the newsletter earlier so that the editor can have some time to work on it. And I, I not that I'm a last minute type of guy, but I, I don't know why. I just like to do the newsletters on Friday. I like to do it just before Sunday because the newsletter goes out Sunday morning early so that I can kind of share anything that happened through the week. You know, that, that's why I like to do it on Friday. Should be a pretty good newsletter. And um, I've got a, I had a, a, one of the main topics is I had one of my newsletter subscribers. He's been with me a long time. He emailed me overnight because he had a problem at his home where his wife was taking a shower and she ran out of hot water and she was not a happy camper. And Arlen did a really good job of describing, you know, the water heater situation, blah, 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 how long he's been in the house. Never happened before. He wanted to know what, and he did everything right. He even called the manufacturer, talked to their tech guy. He, I mean, he did everything right. It was really an amazing uh, that he sent me. And he said, what in the world is going on? Because he thought he was actually getting some uh, bull crap from the manufacturer. He, he wasn't really getting it. I just thought, I don't think that the, the tech had enough life experience to, um, to, he didn't fully explain. There, there, there was a possibility that what the tech said was not completely true. And I go into great detail in, in the column. I actually ended up writing a column about it. It was so good. I thought, oh, I need to write a column about this and then share the column with, with the newsletter subscribers. So if you're not if you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, you should go to the askthebuilder.com. Just go to the homepage and subscribe. It's free. I don't spam you. I don't sell your email address. I don't. I try not to bother you. I don't give it away. You know, some people share their newsletter list. I don't do that. I've never have done that. That's stupid. It's stupid. So I completely respect your privacy. But you're going to like, you're going to like that column uh, that I wrote about uh, why what happened, you know, why Arlen's wife all of a sudden was, 
was getting cold water and she jumped out of that shower. All right. So anyway, crutch word. I want to know what's wrong at your home. I want to know how I can help you. And in the meantime, while you're typing that, I'll tell you about the snow here. I'm looking out the window right now. We're getting, you know, light snow. Like normal size flakes. Oh, you know what? That that actually <laughs> here's something here. This is actually kind of funny, I think. And and it really kind of ties into what's going on around the world for the past two years. I mean, seriously, think about this. <laughs> How many times have you heard growing up that no two snowflakes are alike? I mean, come on. you I know you've heard that. And you might believe it. But have you ever stopped to think about it? In other words, what would it take <laughs> to prove that no two snowflakes are alike? <laughs> Right? So maybe you shouldn't believe everything you're told. Because you know what? I'm looking out my window. I'm just in this little area I'm at. I mean, there's thousands of snowflakes falling down. All right. I'm Now, they may not all be the same here, but one of the snowflakes here might be the same as a mile across the lake there at Gunstock Mountain. <laughs> All right, I'm being a little funny, but I'm also being a little serious. You need to stop believing everything you're told. Stop. Stop. You need to push back. You need to challenge things. Seriously. I mean, if somebody said that, like somebody said, no two snowflakes are alike. Okay. I mean, the question that I would ask, well, how did you come to that conclusion? Could you could you just tell me? I, and what they're going to say is, oh well, when the ice crystals form, they the the ice grows randomly. Well, that doesn't mean that there's no two snowflakes or a light. <laughs> it just may mean that that it takes a hundred trillion snowflakes to fall before two of them are alike. <laughs> All right, I, I know. I'm just trying to share with you. Stop believing everything you're told. Stop it. Apply some critical thinking skills to, to what you're told and think it through. And you already know, here's the last thing I'll say. When, when, when the goalposts keep getting moved, <laughs> when you see one goalpost was here, you know, back 18 or 20 months ago, and all of a sudden that goalpost is here, and then it's here, you know what's going on. <laughs> you know you're being played. <laughs> All right. So you're just so you know, I think I really feel you're being played about the whole snowflake thing. Because I think it's very possible that there are two snowflakes that are identical. I can't prove it, just I have a feeling. <laughs> All right. Uh, so anyway, if you have any questions, uh, happy to answer them. Uh, it's kind of a relaxed, laid back Friday. I am going to go dig out um, some more of my email to fill the gap until such time as you tell me what's wrong at your home. I'm going to go tell you what's wrong at other at the homes of other people who have reached out to me. So I'm digging into the Ask the Builder archives. We'll take a look at some of the questions that I got during the week. They're always pretty good, as well as the comments. The comments at the website are uh, usually really good, too. Um, here's a real, I think this is a pretty interesting, this one came in uh, just uh, earlier in the week. Um, and I, if I shared this, um, so this is really kind of complex. Uh, this, is a, this is a person down in Florida. His name is Dennis. And Dennis said... Uh, my home is about three years old with a Lennox heat pump. When built, I had cold air returns installed in all rooms. They called them home run air return. They put one 
12 inch cold air return in each bedroom for a total of four and a large 16 by 30 return in the hallway, which opens directly into the return air plenum just off the main living area. I don't believe the system is very, very well balanced as the three bedrooms on the south side always are warmer than the rest of the house. The air handler is in the attic above the hallway. The attic is foam insulated. Can I change the return air to just grill opening the attic and add more couple of, you know, so in other words, he's got this complex problem. And, and here, and here was my answer to him. All right. So, so here's what you need to understand about this. So it's a complex issue. And he gave you the biggest clue right away. He said the three bedrooms are always warmer. So in other words, those people are uncomfortable. And it can, I mean, and believe me, in July, June, July, August in Florida in September, it's miserable down there. And he's coming to me for help. And my answer to him was, Dennis, <laughs> this is a really complex issue. I mean, it's, I cannot just answer this in one sentence or two really requires one of my simple phone calls. And I gave him the link and I told him, as I tell just about everybody, the call is free. If at the end of the call, you don't think you got anything out of it or, or you don't think I really helped you that much, you don't have to say anything to me on the call. Just hang up and then send me an email saying, I want my money back. I won't even respond to you. I'll just give you a credit. You'll get your money back. You're, I'm not going to... I'm not, it's not going to be confrontational. Of course, Dennis, Dennis decides, nope, I do not want to pay you any money. I'm just going to figure this out on my own. Here's the answer. Here's, here, here's how complex the answer is. But once again, the answer, it's, it's once in a, it kind of goes back to what I was just talking about before. The, it just goes to show you that a lot of people, they don't really apply a critical thinking skills to different problems. And even though, even though you're not trained in the area, you can still think about it. And he was pretty close because if you remember what he said, he didn't think that the return air system was balanced. Oh, okay. You may be right. Here's where the answer is. It's right in front of you. It's right, I mean, literally, it's right in front of you in your body. Have you ever thought, uh, this is true. So this is a really important teaching moment for, and I hate to use the word teaching moment. A lot of people take the word teaching and it automatically in their head, they think, ooh, that, that's hard. I mean, Everything about school is hard. I don't like school. I don't like to learn things. Learning is hard. Learning means homework. Learning means taking tests. So I like to call it discovering. I don't like to use the word learn. I like to use the word discover. Discovering is fun. If you go like on a geocaching adventure or you're on a, at a party and doing a scavenger hunt and you're just, that's fun or you're discovering something about a new friend, that's fine. Here's what you need to know about heating and air conditioning, about duct work. It needs to work just like the vascular system in your body. I know you probably haven't taken human anatomy. You, you might not have thought about uh, you might not have done any kind of work like that in high school biology. I know I didn't. But I, I remember seeing charts. I remember seeing these, like a, a an illustration of a human, just a human. It doesn't have to be, it could be male, female, it doesn't matter. But it showed their, their, their blood vessels in red um, of the blood vessels that were coming out of your heart. And then it showed in blue the blood vessels that, and the veins that were going back to your heart. So why is that important? What does that have to do with Dennis's problem? It has everything to do with it. Have you have you been admitted to the hospital? Have you been to the emergency room? Have you seen the technology in the past 10, 15, 20 years, whatever? I don't know. I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. But I know that they put on your finger this, they clamped little, it's like a plastic clothespin. And 
it can sense what your blood pressure is at your fingertip. Pretty cool, huh? And what do you think, if everything's working right in your body, what's the blood pressure at your fingertip? Is it the same as about one inch away from your heart? Yes. How does it happen? How does that happen? How big are the blood vessels that leave your heart? I don't know. I've never cut anybody open. I'm guessing, though, that your aorta coming out of your heart, I'm just making a wild guess. Could be a half inch in diameter. At least three-eighths of an inch would be my guess. How big are the blood vessels in the tip of your finger? I don't know. Do you think that they might be a 32nd of an inch in diameter, maybe less. I mean, really small, really tiny. That's why the blood pressure in your finger is the same as near your heart, because as the blood leaves your heart, it's your pump, the heart creates that when it constricts, it creates pressure. That's what the blood pressure is. All right. Right. In a very simplistic way. I'm not, I'm not an MD. Okay. I'm not an expert in blood pressure. But the pump, your heart pumping creates the pressure, just like a water pump creates pressure pushing water. And it creates just a finite amount of pressure. It only creates so much. And as that blood is pushed through from your heart, on the tip, um, some of the blood is, you know, takes some of it goes off to your arm, some of it goes to your shoulder, some of it goes to your chest. And for the blood pressure to be the same in your fingertip, the blood vessels have to keep getting smaller. Otherwise, if they don't get smaller, there's like no energy left to push the blood to your fingertip. So in Dennis's case, in Dennis's case, The installer who put that giant return air right in the wall of the uh, next to the air handler, um, that that's a problem because it's a big problem. It's a big problem. And the point is, and I've got columns on the website about this. All you have to do is go to askthebuilder.com and type in static pressure, two words, static pressure you'll discover, I go into great detail about all of this. And you have to understand that you need to have a return air in every room of the house, except there's there's two rooms you never want to put a return, a return air in. Never, ever, ever put a return air grill in a bathroom <laughs> for obvious reasons. Never put one in a kitchen because you don't want that return air in the kitchen to be sucking... Um, cooking oil and grease and that's vaporized in the air and, and aromas and transporting it all through the house. Don't want to do that. But every place else, you should have a return air. The other thing about return airs, a return air grill, it needs to be completely opposite in the room of where the supply is. In the Midwest, where I came from, where I used to build, uh, we would put... we. We, you always want to put your, your conditioned air, either your heating air or your air conditioning air. It should be flooding the wall, the outside walls of that of the room for a reason, because that's that's the effect, that's the temperature on the other side of the wall that you're trying to fight. You're in this battle, meaning if it's zero outside, you want your warm air to be flooding that wall to try to keep that wall warm and vice versa in the summertime. If it's 95 or 105 outside, you you want that colder air to be flooding the outside wall. So that means you want that air to be pulled across the room. So the return air, if, if the supply is on the floor of the outside wall, that means the return air needs to be across the room, 180 degrees away, up high, up high, to pull the air up across your body as it goes back to the air handler to get reheated or recooled. So that's your um, that's your course in in heating and air conditioning today. Uh, 
Yes, Jack, the water heater answer is going to be in Sunday's newsletter. I was doing a little tease there, trying to get people to subscribe to the newsletter, trying to get people to read the newsletter. <laughs> so yes, the answer is in the Sunday newsletter. Um, with a kind of a provocative headline. <laughs> I don't know. I, I may change that before. I may change that because maybe maybe Arlen, he might not appreciate that. I don't know. I, I'm in fact, the more I think about it, I'm going to change that headline um, of what I have it right now. So I, and that's a kind of cool. I can change it up until the last minute before the emails blasted out. All right. I'm going to tell you about the snow here real quickly. Um, I think we were this, <laughs> you know, color me cynical. All right. I, I, I'm telling you right now, the, the older I get, um, and I, you know, I think this is true of a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of us older people, you know, we get more cynical because we, um, we have a, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of life experience. And, and I, I mean, this, this what I'm going to say is not really new or uh, innovative. <laughs> a lot of people, I think, feel this way. But the whole thing about weather, by both the websites that are focused on weather, as well as local and national news channels, it's it's all seems to be based on fear. I mean, if you if you want to control somebody, and I, I happen to have a friend right now who is being completely manipulated by fear. If you want to control somebody, just make them fearful. Because when, if you've ever noticed, when you are afraid, when you're fearful, your critical thinking skills, they just completely crater. They just, you're done. You, you, uh, you have a hard time thinking when you're fearful. You have a really hard time. And of course, they're just hyping the weather to, um, well, I mean, to make more money. I mean, because they 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 want you to come to their channel. They want you to watch the weather news. And and here's what's so crazy. I mean, you're watching something that you can't even control. <laughs> I I actually had this conversation yesterday with my next door neighbor. I was I had gone up to uh, to check the mail, or I was walking up to the mail something. I don't know. And John and Donna were outside, taking down their Christmas decorations. And uh, we were talking a little bit about the storm. The storm had not yet hit, and uh, it was supposed to be raining. It hadn't started to rain yet. And he just, my next door neighbor was just ragging on the weather people saying, you know, I, he says, no matter what they say now, I always cut it in half. And our prediction here, I think, if I look back, it was 6 to 12 inches, um, maybe 12 to 18. I, I don't know. Let me look outside. Um. I think I can look at the roof of my truck. All right. So my cab lights on my Ford truck are just barely covered. And this cab lights stick up about an inch and a half. I, I would say, and I know some of that snow's blown off. So I'm going to say maybe we've gotten three inches so far. And I have not, I didn't, before the live stream, I didn't look at the, uh, the surface map of the United States. What's really important is you need to understand where the center of the low pressure system is with respect to where you live. And um, if the low pressure system is still south, actually, I can look it up on my phone. Let's stand by. Let's do it. Let's see what's going on. Um, let's see where it might be. Of course, I don't know how accurate this is. I don't know when they update this map. But on my app, on my weather app, I can um, pull up a radar map. If I try to show it to you, it always seems like it's so, um, I don't know. Here, Here's what it is. I'll show it to you. But, um, you know, it's just so bright. You cannot really see it. And even if I tilt it, sorry about that. But you have to understand me. I'm right in the center of the map of the phone. And the low pressure system, there's two of them. There's one in Washington, D.C. on this front. And it's right now it's a stalled front. The front is kind of stalled. It's not moving up. It's not moving southeast. It's not, not moving northwest. And there's one out in the Atlantic Ocean. <clears throat> um, looks like probably uh, 70 miles south of Rhode Island. And 
what that means is that if, if this is why you need to study weather a little bit, in my opinion. You need to become a student of it. Because once you understand where the low pressure system is and which direction it's moving, and here it always it moves to the northeast. You know, they, they move north and northeast. Uh, sometimes in the summer they'll move east. But if you know where the low pressure system is, you can then make a prediction as to how much longer the bad weather is going to be. That's what you need to know. Basically, it looks like we're going to get another, depending on how fast that's moving, could be another seven to eight hours worth of snow, maybe more, but it's not snowing hard. Um, all right. So uh, the whole point is we we haven't gotten that much snow. We, we did get, it was a lot of rain yesterday. I didn't measure it, probably an inch. Um, it rained before I went to bed. It was raining through the night. I think it stopped raining at about three in the morning. And then it kind of grew to, you know, ice. And we have about half to three quarters of an, in, of an inch of ice on the driveway, which is going to be a little problematic to deal with. But the, the temperature, I think, next week is supposed to go up here in New Hampshire. Let's see. If it's right, if these guys are right. Yeah. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Friday. I mean, we, we've got temperatures like next Thursday, if it's right, it's going up to 40 and sunny. Um, so put a little salt down, ice disappears. All right, here we go. Let's, let's get caught up. Uh, we don't have a lot of questions today. Every, I think everybody's burned out on Friday. I can make that. I can agree with that. I can see that. I might be getting out of here early because we don't have much to going on. We, you know, we've got people watching, but no one's putting any questions. And so I, I'm just kind of rambling on. Uh, Will just says, I've changed elements before after testing with a meter. So I think Will's talking about elements in a water heater. Um, yeah, that's good. You always have to remember, you have to fill a water heater up with water before you turn it back on with electric ones. You'll burn up the elements. They burn up instantly if they're not surrounded by water. Can't believe I drained all that. Oh, you've got a lot of snow there. Isn't that interesting? Eight inches. And Will's not that far away from me. I've never really measured it, but as the crow flies... I, I would venture to say Will's only 60, 70 miles away from me. Because um, I know the trouble is when I drive to my daughter's in Bar Harbor, I, have, I can't drive in a straight line. And it's about 225 miles from my house to my daughter's house in Bar Harbor. The trouble is I've got this circuitous route to kind of get around Lake uh, Winnipesaukee. And that probably eats up 30 miles or so. So it is a straight line might only be 195 miles to my daughter's house. And, and Will's much farther south than Bar Harbor. So anyway, that's nice to know information. I am, <laughs> what am I going to do tomorrow? And then I will, uh, uh, I'm going to be working a little bit on the website in the morning. Then I'm, I'm going to see, I, I'm not going to do anything in the driveway or my neighbor's driveway until this whole Stupid storm is over. Whenever that's going to be, let's see what they say. You know, they they update the uh, winter. They update the winter storm warning. Um, so they say it's going to be over at seven o'clock tonight. I I don't know. We'll see. I mean, seven o'clock tonight. That's only two hours. And the low pressure system. Are you kidding me? Is still south of me. I mean, the low pressure needs to be north east of me for the storm to be maybe getting over with. I don't know about that. You have to check the surface map. If you don't have any questions, uh, I think I'm going to get out of here. Uh, get out of here a little early today because um, it's Friday. You could be exhausted from working all week. I get that. It could have been a big week for you. Um, I got pretty much accomplished this week. Not as much as I wanted to. Uh, one of the things I am starting next week is something I wanted to do earlier in the month, but I got a curveball thrown at me three uh, three weeks ago. I think I told you that we got this silly ADA lawsuit against Stain Solver, and I had to deal with that. That kind of threw things off the rails for a little bit. But um, I like working off of lists. I like having a really structured environment. 
and I have uh, three or four big projects that I'm working on and I'm not giving the attention to them they deserve. So what I'm actually going to do starting on Monday is I'm going to treat my weekly schedule a lot like a doctor does. And I'm just going to put in certain blocks of time. And during that time period, that's exactly what I'm going to work on and nothing else. I'm not going to look at anything else. If the phone rings, I'm not answering it, blah, 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 blah. And that way uh, I can march through and get those projects done. Uh, there's an old saying that a, a, a business friend of mine told me probably 25 years ago, uh, elephants are best eaten one bite at a time. So I've got a few elephants that I'm working on and I need to take a little bite out of them uh, every week, at least every week. You know, I might be able to allocate two time periods each week to each elephant. Um, anyway, I'm going to get out of here. No questions. You have no questions. That means you have no problems. It means there's not much I can do for you today, but I might be able to do something for you next week. Uh, if you have not subscribed to my askthebuilder.com newsletter, I'm telling you, I think you're making a big mistake by not doing it. Uh, some of them are kind of funny. Um, I guarantee you each issue, you will discover something new. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> you're going to discover something really new about your fellow newsletter subscribers this Sunday. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm I'm exposing some of them, not their names, not their email addresses, but you're going to find out something about some of my newsletter subscribers that might surprise you. And uh, you, you want to see that. Jack says, check the thermostats. Yes, I, I would agree with that. Check thermostats. Make sure that they're recording. Make sure they're calibrated correctly. No doubt about it. I'm out of here. Uh, have a great weekend. I know I will. Uh, we are, we're just, a, we're going to, we're nine days away <clears throat> from the Super Bowl. The Bengals, Cincinnati Bengals against the LA Rams. Uh, Alex and I have a bet. Uh, if you, earlier in the week, Alex and I made a bet. Alex is from LA. I was born and raised in Cincinnati. You know, and you, you can't, I mean, you know, the Bengals have only been to the Super Bowl, I think one time, maybe twice. I don't know. Long time ago, long time ago. This time, though, the Bengals are for real. <laughs> They're a um, really interesting team. And I, I'm not a football expert. And I gave up on football uh, 18 months ago. I was done with it. Um, and we don't need to go into that. But I went back. My son said, Dad, you got these Bengals, man. This is like a month and a half ago. Dad, the Bengals are got a really good record. You need to watch them. And so... I watched a game. Kathy watched a game. And then we, we watched the last two playoff games. And uh, bingo, man. The Bengals. Whew. Here's the deal. Alex and I made a bet. And the loser, whoever loses the Super Bowl, <laughs> um, it, it, if the Rams win, I have to send Alex a one-pound box of Aglamese's dark chocolate pecandes. If uh, the Bengals win, Alex is going to send that to me. <laughs> and I just cannot wait. I'm hoping that about, let's see, how long would it take? It would only take a week to get here. So that would be, um, so the, the, the oh, so unfortunately, I won't be here. I would have left. Uh, it's going to be, it would be on February 21st, on hopefully on February 21st on the live stream. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to make sure Alex is here. <laughs> I'm going to be taking a bite of one of the picandes that he bought me. <laughs> oh, what do you know? Pretty cocky of me. I know. But the Bengals better come through, buddy. <laughs> okay. Have a great weekend. I'm Tim Carter. This has been Ask the Builder. I hope to be here on Monday. As long as I don't get abducted, I should be here. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for putting up with my ramblings. Maybe next week you'll have more questions. You have... Nobody had any questions about their house today. You're so lucky. You should see all the questions that come into me every day. You have no idea how lucky you are. You are so lucky. I'm Tim Carter. This has been Ask the Builder.